I bid you welcome. Or welcome back. Wait, you know what would be funny? Let's hope I don't mess it up. Uh, come on. I need this side of the face. Yes. Oh no, the unbeatable neck beard. No, it worked. I'm gonna start a makeup channel, by the way. Okay, I don't want to overdo it. Let's just keep one, one scar here. Now I can see a little bit of black ink in my peripheral vision and it's going to bother me through the entire recording. Now I bid you welcome or a welcome back. This channel is a Wednesday fan art channel now. <laughs> no, I've just happened to make two of these in a row. Today's picture is a little bit out there. So I will put in some trigger warnings for you. It is not anything gross and super heavy, but it does communicate a few serious things, so I felt the need to include some disclaimers at the start, you know, despite the fact that these are real retention killers. So what are we going to paint today? Listen, I'm going to make a Frankensteinian monster out of Wednesday Adams and Enid Sinclair, originally portrayed by Emma Myers and Jenna Ortega respectively, from the Tim Burton series titled Wednesday, which is a spin-off slash sequel slash soft reboot of the Adams family. Now if you know me, you know that I really like making these Frankensteinian monsters. The first one that started my whole trend was... Wait, I was about to say that it was this one of the Golden Trio from 2021, but I then realized that I made this in 2020. But it's a single self-portrait, so when it comes to fusing multiple characters together, it was this one from 2021 that is really asking for a remake. Let's just say that. Another one for the video ideas list. So the ones that I actually are relevant are like these three here plus kind of this one. I will talk about why exactly I like fusing multiple characters into one in this fashion. Why I'm going to stitch these two together this time and just just why why I decided to become the Dr. Frankenstein of digital paintings. By the way, I had this idea for this piece before I watched the entire series. Partially I watched it because of this idea. Of course, it's not trending anymore and <laughs> season two is uh, most likely at least a year away from airing. So it's, it's, it's just the perfect time for this, right? Also, I just forgot I want it to undo my hair after I scribbled on my face and say the following line. Ha, would you look at that? Not washing my hair for a week actually serves a story purpose. I'm not going to re-record my first scene from this script. It is going to stay like this now. And uh, let's switch into the voiceover part. For the very first sketch, I already had the idea fleshed out. I know where I will put the distinct elements of the piece. In it has her scars on her left cheek. So that was the side of her face I placed on the picture. That's really the only really specific feature that had to be specifically on one side. The eyes, sides of the lips and the nose are really self-explanatory. I ended up taking a photo of my own hand for reference, then I tried to put it on both sides of the face. I will explain later why it was important to put it where it ended up. Splitting the hairline is always a spectacular thing on these pictures, especially now when we have really different hair colors. I also added a piece of Wednesday's hair that is reattached with an earring, which is one visual clue for a certain storytelling element. You may try to guess why it's important before I get to it. From the start, adding the metallic claws to the hand was also already present. You will see why it's important as well. I'm so good at foreshadowing, by the way. You didn't even notice that when I kept mentioning the things that will come back later. Adding some flat colors. The things I wanted to mention is uh, first, the two characters have uh, slightly different 
skin colors, in it being much more pale. This way it's easy to make the body parts recognizable as belonging to one of the characters. It's easy to make it clear which body parts belong to which person. I added some colors to the nails on the hand, based on in its hand from the series, who painted her nails in vibrant colors. And we have her horizontally striped sweater, possibly the fan favorite outfit, I always feel it's the most common that appears on fan art by people, and it is both really recognizable and interesting with the many colors. For the shadow layers I used multiply mode as always, and I have to admit I don't remember if I used a different shadow color for the two sides of the face, I'm pretty sure I didn't. I'll say I'd remember that, also I did treat the face as just one, when it comes to the shading, it can be disorienting since there are two halves stitched together, but beyond the base color they must be treated like one 3D object when it comes to lighting it properly. You can really easily get tangled in which part belongs to what character and then mess up the lighting. Later I changed the stitches, they do look more like the ones on Ting from the series, but I turned them into a more interesting version later. The same thing goes to most of the face, I did so many tweaks and changes later I couldn't even count them, but they were all worth it in the end. This version was already nice, but it was re really rough at many places. As I start the rendering there is one big topic I want to talk about and that is why do I make these Frankenstein portraits? What's the deal with these? What is the meaning behind them? First of all one of the reasons is really simple, they look good. They are interesting to look at, they are pleasantly morbid, they are a challenge to make. They do make some things easier than most portraits, I'll talk about that in a second, but they are generally harder to make than a regular solo portrait. The other reason is that I do have a message, a topic that is expressed through these portraits. It's a complicated one, so let's discuss the other one first. There are so many pieces of fan art, mainly about characters, the same thing goes for portraits of just any kind, but I'm adding a unique twist with my pieces. I can depict multiple characters in one portrait by combining their body parts in endless ways. The thing I always aim for is making the characters recognizable and unique. Every character has facial features that are unique to them, even if you combine characters who are similar to each other, and you can do different eye shapes, the hair of the characters being different. Most of the times I saw two lips together, so you can literally see that they have a different shape and color, and you can do the same thing with the nose as well. If the characters have recognizable little things like freckles, scars like on this piece with the scars of Enid, burst marks, or other similar things I don't think I ever did, like tattoos or piercings, you can combine these in a way that makes the characters all recognizable. I literally started this series of mine by combining three characters together and I should make one with more than three in the future. Foreshadowing, I have a crazy idea for a full body monster that combines seven characters. I won't tell who they are, but older viewers of the channel might be able to guess. If anyone can correctly guess in the comments, I'll make it a higher priority. How about that? Not to mention the different kinds of scars and stitchings that you can do, and I do want to make a video about this whole topic sometime soon, where I will go into details about it. I find this fascinating to say the least. What is relevant now is how I made the stitches on this one. They started as just lines across the scar, but then I turned them into individual threads on the face, but I added some metal pieces where the hair is later. Right next to those I made this long thread as a transition that will hold the wound together, then came the metal pieces. The reason the black threads would have blended in with the black hair, so they are more visible this way, and also we have some extra variety as well. Okay, let me stop here for a second, and I want to show you this. I've been reworking the mouth area of this picture, and I accidentally, I, I feel like I, I learned something today, and I wanted to show it, namely about how to make the mouth look sad in a really specific way. So generally I have uh, YouTube or something else open on my second monitor that is uh, to the right of the one that I'm working on, and I just got this YouTube ad that was the trailer for this movie called uh, Miller's Girl, it's coming out this year something, and it features Jenna Ortega, totally just uh, randomly, it shows her movie while I was uh, working on, on the picture that is partially based on her face, and what I found was this shot, so I was just looking through some of this, uh, this uh, footage from this trailer, and then I saw this, and it's like, 
half a second and i was like okay wait uh, wait for a second let me let me see that once again how the mouth area works right now so i've been struggling with making my character look properly sad and whatever i did with the mouth it kind of looked like a smile it kind of looked like just a strangely shaped facial feature without any real meaning and i was thinking about actually opening the mouth at least partially because that's like a possible way of showing sadness on a face when it's like the lips are partially departed from each other then i I accidentally just saw this clip and look at what's happening here i hope that it's properly visible on the recording what we have here someone flexing a bunch of muscles and as a result the lips are kind of uh, curled inwards and it creates a few strange shapes around the mouth area the first thing that i noticed was this part between the lips and the nose creating a little bump there so you can actually see if you Wait for a second. If you look at the Asaru head, this part is pretty much shown as one continuous plane, and that's what I've been uh, doing with it uh, ever since I learned about the Asaru head. But when you flex your muscles this way, and you're like pushing your lips together, this part starts uh, to curve a little bit. And if you have a light from the top, there will be actually a shadow area here, as if we inserted one set of extra planes to the Asaru head. And the same thing happens below the lips. This part also gets that bump area the generally a little corner of the mouth that has a little highlight on it when you do this with your mouth it's going to expand this whole highlight area is going to be much bigger and you will have a bigger shadow area below that one as well and also as a result there is this part of the face here in the side it also gets pushed out a little bit so i was trying out how it really looked First of all, I always kind of blow up the lips a little bit too much and then I always uh, shrink them down a little bit. It's pretty much uh, true for every single one of my facial features on pretty much every single one of my uh, images. But what I did, I obviously reduced the size of the lips, but I tried adding this this bump here and to the bottom as well. It's not the... It's not really accurate, I want to make it properly, but just look at the difference here, when it's like you, you really see that the lips are getting a little bit squished together, and it's giving a little bit of a sadder expression to the face. Also, I tried adding this part, this little bump at the side of the face, I might have overdone it a little bit, but I just wanted to show you, show you this, how you can squish the lips together a little bit, and you're not only going to see a difference in the shape, of the lips but also the parts around the mouth are going to be a little bit tiny tiny bit different that sentence sounded funny but this way you can uh, really make that feeling of uh, someone squishing their lips together in this really sad expression and i will uh, try out what i can bring out from this it might actually be a really strange either way because i'm combining two different lips with uh, wednesday's lips being uh, much like uh, vertically bigger to really show the distinct feature of the character but i think that this thing was a really nice step towards the right direction so i'm going to refine it and we will see how the picture goes from here entering the final stage pretty much just adding details everywhere I retouched and slightly repositioned the eyes many times here. I really did that with all the facial features at this point. Added some more variety into the sweater, made the braids correctly. I also did the short parts of the hair, like making sure they feel like growing hair. I even placed a little bundle of black hair over the forehead to show that there's that short part. The things I really wanted to make well here were the expression with the eyes and the eyebrows and the teeth as well just making the eyeballs look wet is one of my new favorite things by the way beyond those the hand the hand was really important here it is a full-blown focal point has a special meaning that makes it even more important than regular hands on top of it all it is expressive it is stretching all the fingers are bent separately it's touching the face yes that's always a hard thing to make even by itself when two objects are touching each other especially if those are organic the hand casts a shadow on the body i did it with some layer mode after i separated the whole hand from the picture they were originally on one layer then i filled in a copy with a cooler shadow color that i stretched and edited to its place and we still have the claws that are simple but three-dimensional objects that are seen from different angles and do serve an important role both visually and through their storytelling potential now i keep mentioning this storytelling thing let's talk about that fasten your seat belts it's gonna be a long one continuing the topic about the frankensteinian portraits the other reason 
why I make Frankensteinian characters, the more emotional reason is more than just cool images. It is something I only figured out after completing a few of these. See, sometime last year I started painting a lot of crying people. There were different reasons behind them doing so, but my main topics were sadness, grief and abuse, and the one that is really relevant here is the grief part. I also just picked up the Frankensteinian portraits because they looked cool, of course, but then I realized that there is something much more to them. And this was kind of the first one where I really implemented this idea. I will spell it out for you. For me, people being turned into a Frankensteinian monster is a visual representation of grief. When I made this piece, my idea included a very specific detail. The one who is alive in this body is Enid. If you look at the piece, I did hide some clues. They are not that obvious, but they are there. The less obvious one is the crying. I'm sure both characters would cry at this point, but uh, this is not a fresh Frankensteinian monster. How do you know both characters had their hair cut off, in it had all of her hair removed. That was really just a visual thing to make them unique first, then I built it into the story. I imagine whoever stitched them together started with Enid, who was still alive, and found it just practical, but when Wednesday's body was introduced, they just cut the hair along the stitching, leaving it mostly there. Could have been a quick and sloppy decision to make sure Enid will survive. There is short black hair along the stitching and short blonde hair on the other side that is long enough to be not freshly cut maybe about a month old, so she's not freshly made and is still crying. I imagine Wednesday wouldn't cry for a long time, unlike Enid. I mean, most likely Wednesday would just grieve without crying if she didn't intentionally suppress her feelings, which is, let's be honest, even more likely. What else is here that was definitely Enid's doing? She has some makeup around the eye, Wednesday used mascara too, but the pink makeup is definitely done by Enid. Also, there's a piece of Wednesday's hair worn as an earring. I imagine Wednesday wouldn't just keep a piece of hair she'd just let it go and throw it away, which is something Enid would have a much harder time doing. Also, she's wearing Enid's sweater. By the way, the one that has the colors of the lesbian pride flag upside down. I'd really like to have a word with the costume designer. I noticed it at first viewing, and I thought it was a visual clue to Enid's sexuality, but I'm not so sure anymore, to say the least. Anyways, the biggest one is the hand. That is Wednesday's hand. You can see by the skin color. It's not that noticeable. I moved it next to Enid's side of the face to show the difference in skin color. Enid's skin is much more pale, which is a really nice visual thing for these portraits. But it's a key element here. She has painted nails and metallic claws as well. Why? Well, upon feeling a lot of dysphoria from the new body parts, Enid decided to paint her nails like before and added those handmade claws to make uh, this hand feel less alien than before. Enid did that to make herself feel more normal, but at the same time she kept Wednesday's hair and she's wearing it and she also did her makeup only her side of the face because it's part of giving respect to Wednesday. She didn't turn Wednesday's body into hers, didn't paint the hair. I'm pretty sure it's hard to use hair dry with stitches in your face, but she just kept the way she looked. She is not Wednesday but she wants to honor her with keeping her look for the parts of the body that belonged to Wednesday. And imagine Wednesday would not do the same. She would keep only her own look. No colors, nor claws. This is the key to understanding what I want to express here. These pieces are about grief. As I said, being turned into a Frankensteinian monster with someone is a visual representation of it. Now, I myself haven't experienced really deep and life-altering grief. I did lose family members and exactly one former colleague who I didn't see as a friend, but 
some people would argue we were, but never my best friend or significant other or parent or sibling. Still, I imagine that this is what grief feels like based on media and what I heard from people. The other person being there with you, constantly occupying your mind, seeing them everywhere, even in the mirror instead of your own face, which must be how it feels like to lose someone who has a really similar face to you, like a sibling. It must feel like as if you were stitched into a Frankensteinian monster, as if you literally had parts of your body torn apart and replaced with someone else's, along with the scars that will fade but will also remain for the rest of your life. As I said before, I want to make a dedicated video about making Frankensteinian portraits, and I will mention multiple inspirations in that one. I'd feel bad if I squished those into the end of this video, but I'll just mention my biggest one, and it was American Horror Story Coven. If you've seen it, you know what I mean. I mean, beyond Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, of course, and Karloff's, but now let's see the final piece. I wanted to show you something first. So I completed this piece over a month ago. I just procrastinated on making this video like always. And I did share this at a few places. And I want to read out some nice comments that I got on r slash vanclare, which is a subreddit dedicated to shipping these two characters. For some reason, these kinds of subreddits always appreciate works like this much more than others. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know. You know, that, like the, the, the outlandish pieces of fan art, the ones that are not just a random frame study or uh, like comic strip or, or something. But let's see. Nice art, but I hate it. <laughs> I was literally coming to say this well, haha, <laughs> like it's extremely well illustrated, kudos to the artist, but I hate the idea so much and the tears make them seem like they are in pain. It's awful, beautifully rendered, but awful. <laughs> I hate it, thanks. Nice art, by the way. <laughs> the more I look at it, the more I hurt. My favorite. I forgot to mention this in the recording. This one is referring to the fact that I titled this piece The Dismal Daydreams of the Woefully Wanderous Wenklerstein. Wednesday from Beyond the Grave. Frankenstein was the doctor. Mary Shelley would turn in her grave if she saw this. If not, I'd expect you to dig her out and do it yourself for the atrocity you just committed. Thank you, Wednesday. I appreciate your kindness. Unless you finally went insane. You must be aware that you're just talking to yourself while puppeting with two images inside Krita. Truly pathetic. And now you even decided to zoom out and make it into a self-aware joke. I'm not even going to dignify that with an insult. There's nothing I could say that would hurt you more than what you are already doing to yourself. And that was it for the project. I will leave you to judge how it uh, turned out. I'm fond of almost every single thing on this piece. Maybe it dragged on for a bit too long and I was just losing my touch with it. And I wasn't really aware exactly how the expression was turning out and it ended up hurting this piece a little bit. Still, I will say that so far this is my favorite Frankensteinian monster that I did and also one of my favorite pieces of all time like I would go back in there and fix a few little things and I'm not sure I might do it uh, sometime but you know it like you just go into this okay let's fix this little thing and let's fix that little thing as well and that let's fix this tiny little thing here and then you just spend another 10 hours on this piece instead of uh, leaving it the way it is and making other better things and then like maybe redoing the whole thing a few years from now. I will say that this the way it is really lived up to my expectations and uh, based on a lot of feedback people uh, gave me they did find it horrendous in the best way possible. Hopefully I managed to make a piece that really qualifies as a true piece of kitsch. You know, the kind of piece that destroys every sort of critical distance between the viewer and the subject matter and evokes the emotional response that I wanted. And tell me what you think and uh, get ready for the next video. It's not gonna be another 
Wednesday fan art, but I do have some Wednesday pieces in the works. Pieces that are even more out there than this one. That's the only thing that I will say for now. And I will turn that into a video as well, but only after the second part of my Halloween series video that I've been... I don't even know how long I've been procrastinating on this. It's like almost next year's Halloween by the time I finish it. But for today, I thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day, create something, even if it involves picking two really wholesome comfort characters and doing something horrendous to them. But most importantly, don't forget to have fun while doing that. Farewell. Yeah, I think I will finish editing this stuff and I will go and wash my hair, took it upon myself to become the Frankensteinian doctor of digital painting. Frankensteinian doctor. Why I became the Dr. Frankenstein, that's the right line, but it will make a good joke, so I'm not going to re-record it.